million years, the Earth's climate has fluctuated, cycling from ice ages to warmer periods. But in the last century, the planet's temperature has risen unusually fast, about 1.2 to 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists believe it's human activity that's driving the temperatures up, a process known as global warming. Ever since the Industrial Revolution began, factories, power plants, and eventually cars have burned fossil fuels such as oil and coal, releasing huge amounts of carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere. These greenhouse gases trap heat near the Earth through a naturally occurring process called the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect begins with the sun and the energy it radiates to the Earth. The Earth and the atmosphere absorb some of this energy, while the rest is radiated back into space. Naturally occurring gases in the atmosphere trap some of this energy and reflect it back, warming the Earth. That was a scene from a recent National Geographic special on climate change, global warming and the greenhouse effect. Tonight, we are going to wrap our minds around what some have called a planetary emergency involving the entire human race and what we can or should be doing about it. I'm Dean Jorge Bocobo, filling in for Manolo Quezon, The Explainer. Because of the recent string of deadly typhoons, Ondoy, Pepeng, and Santi, Filipinos have suddenly heard loud alarm bells being rung over terms like climate change and global warming. Some of you may be wondering what the fuss is all about, since an average of 20 typhoons pummel the Philippines annually. These three storms were by no means the worst typhoons in living memory. And we all know that the climate is always changing from hot to cold and back again, as the seasons progress through winter, spring, summer, and fall. So, take a look at, at this plot. It shows the annual variation of the seasons between 1958 and 1996. The tops of the sawtooth curve were data taken during summer of each year, the bottoms during winter time. It plots the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere during the corresponding years. Now obviously, it is colder during the winter than the summer. This shows that CO2 concentration closely tracks the annual variation of temperature due to changing seasons of the year. It's colder in the winter and hotter in the summer, but we can see that an average temperature would lie just between these two annual extremes. Now, when we speak of global warming and climate change, it is not this seasonal variation that is being referred to but the average surface temperature from year to year. Notice that there is a clear upward trend in CO2 concentration, which also tracks quite closely a measured increase in this mean temperature through the second half of the 20th century. Both the average temperature of the Earth's surface and carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere are seen to be increasing throughout this period of a little less than half a century. But the Earth is far, far older than that, and one has to wonder whether this so-called increase is not part of some natural cooling and warming cycle that goes on over longer stretches of planetary history. Let's zoom out a bit. Take a look at another plot, which does show the variation of temperature in the Earth's climate for the last 150,000 years. During this time, the Earth entered a series of ice ages, with so-called interglacial intervals. For example, 20,000 years ago, most of North America was under a mile of ice during the last ice age. Then, about 10,000 years ago, at the dawn of modern agriculture, the Earth entered the present comparatively warm interglacial interval. This alternating pattern of ice ages and warm intervals corresponds exactly with the hills and valleys of this graph, of mean temperature in each epoch from past to present. Ice ages in the troughs, warm intervals at the crests. Note that during the entire 150,000 year period shown, 
the mean global temperature varies by a very small value of only about 5 degrees Celsius. So, even small changes in this global mean temperature can spell the difference between a green hothouse and a winter wonderland. Now, you may be as asking yourself, how in the world do these scientists get this data? Do they fly back in a time machine and poke thermometers into the Earth's surface? Not exactly. This data comes from minute physical and chemical analysis of ice cores extracted by drilling into the Antarctic ice pack and correlating it with the known advance and retreat of the Ice, ice Age glaciers from other geological data. An important and stunning result of this research, which has been going on for decades, is that the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, as deduced from the amount trapped in the ice cores, tracks exactly the cycle of global cooling and global warming that accompany the coming and going of the ice ages. During any given ice age, when glaciers have covered almost all of the Earth's surface, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is measurably lower than during the warm interglacial periods. It is this research that first established the greenhouse effect of heat-trapping gases like CO2 and methane, which is 10 times more capable of trapping heat than even CO2. Obviously, during this period, there have been no gas-guzzling SUVs or coal-fired power plants polluting the atmosphere with carbon dioxide. So clearly, there are other causes of global warming and cooling than human activity. For example, the flatulence of ruminants like cows, sheep, and reindeer, whose methane-filled farts are known to be major sources of atmospheric methane. Likewise, termites, of which there are more per cubic kilometer of the Earth's crust than humans have ever been on Earth, are significant emitters of methane gas. At the same time, an abundance of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere greatly increases the growth of plants and vegetation, which absorb carbon dioxide and emit oxygen, thus producing global cooling by counteracting the greenhouse effect. That is the reason why scientists and environmentalists have been encouraging the planting of trees as a means of mitigating global warming.